الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الكريم ما بعد فعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم So my dear brothers and sisters assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Today inshallah we'll start the dars of Quran with ayah number one uh let me see i number is 1 uh 166 166 surah al baqarah i number 166 a'udhu billahi minash shaitani rajeem bismillahir rahmanir rahim iz tabarra alladhina tabi'u min alladhina tabi'u wa ra'u al 'adhab wa taqatta'at bihim al asbab وقال الذين اتبعوا لو أن لنا كرة فنتبرع منهم كما تبرعوا منا كذلك يريهم الله أعمالهم حسرات عليهم وما هم بخارجين من النار صدق الله العظيم So my dear brothers and sisters if you are hearing some noises or sounds uh, please uh, excuse me because there is some work going on at my home and although it is after sunset now after maghrib but still um the labor are still working so you might hear some uh noises so I, i apologize for that but i guess they will be leaving very soon so um these two ayahs ayah number 166 and 167 these two ayahs are talking about whom we should follow or whom should we take our leaders or in, in other words we can also say that these two ayat are teaching us how important it is to choose those people whom we uh, decide to follow because in our lifetimes each of us follow someone so um this aya is just telling us that if we decide to follow those people who themselves are evil they are evil doers they are not on the straight path but we chose to follow them then on the day of judgment when these evil leaders when they will see the punishment that is waiting for them so they themselves will become so frightened so nervous because they will see their punishment waiting for them that they will refuse to uh take any responsibility of those people who had followed them and they will just flatly tell the angels that look these guys were following me and i didn't ask them to follow so if they chose to follow me so it is their decisions do not uh put their sins into my account i am worried about my own uh, punishment that is waiting for them so i don't want my punishment to be double and tripled because of those people who lost the right way because of following me so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this these two ayat is saying, uh, is is advising us that we must uh choose the l- right leaders for us because in every era in every generation of people there are leaders whom people follow our children follow youngsters follow women follow men follow unfortunately nowadays we don't follow the pious people the god fearing people we follow people like film stars um singers uh, models of different kinds um you know you know dancers uh you know uh, people who themselves are not doing the right thing so we try to Uh, dress up the way these uh, leaders or these actors or these entertainers dress up 
to the extent that we try to f emulate their lifestyles. So that if uh, they are doing something evil, something wrong, uh, since we have taken them as, as our idols, as our uh, leaders, so when we see that in their private lives they are doing something, uh, so we try to do the same thing. If they are dressing up in a different, in a certain way, we try to, to dress up in the, in the same way. If they are doing something haram, so just because they are doing something haram, we feel that it is, it is the in thing to do it. It is the fashionable thing to, to do it. Right? So this is how um, people are misguiding themselves. Right? And Allah in Quran have time and again uh, advised us that we must kunu ma'asadiqeen wa kum minash shakirin that you should emulate you should follow people who themselves are pious so that when you see pious leaders you will emulate them and you will become pious uh, uh, yourself. Right? But as I said, in the world today, right now, the fashion is not to follow the pious people. The fashion is to follow the crooked people. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, Is tabarra al tubi'u min al Said, on that day, those leaders who are being followed, when faced with their punishment, will renounce those who followed them. And the bonds which united them will break. In other words, Allah is saying, when the leaders will see the punishment they will renounce their their followers renounce their followers they will say we have nothing to do with with them just like allah said in surah ibrahim that waqala shaytan lamma qudi al ard inna allaha wa'adakum wa'ad al haqqi wa wa'adtukum fa akhlaftukum وَمَا كَانَ لِيَا عَلَيْكُمْ مِنْ سُلْطَانِ إِلَّا عَنْ دَعُوتُكُمْ فَاسْتَذَبْتُمْ لِي فَلَا تَلُومُونِي وَلُومُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ These leaders, when they will see the, the punishment, they say that your Rabb had told you to follow the righteous people. Why did you follow me? You knew it very well that I am calling people towards evil. Yet, when I made a call, and my call was a call to follow the evil ways, haram ways, unethical ways, immoral ways, indecent ways, you responded to it. You are the one who accepted it. So I just made a call. It was up to you to accept or reject. So these leaders will say, فَلَا تَلُومُونِي وَلُومُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ so don't curse me. Don't put the blame on me. If you want to blame, blame your own self. Because you chose to follow me. I didn't force you to follow me. So, my dear, dear brothers and sisters, this following our leaders, we need to know whom we are following. And what we should see is that by following this certain person, am I going to benefit in this world and an akhirah? Right? So then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, tabau, law anna lana karratan minhum kama minna. Now the followers, when they will see that on the day of judgment, that these leaders are not only being go thrown in hell, but they are denouncing any connection 
that was there between us and them. Meaning we used to, we were crazy after our idols, after our film stars, after our the singers and models. And we were crazy of them. I mean, we literally used to worship them. We literally used to imitate them. So we love them so much. But, to, but today, they are completely, openly renouncing us. So the followers will be shocked. Now they will say that وَقَالَ الَّذِينَ تَبَعُوا The followers will say لَوْ أَنَّ لَنَا كَرَّةً If it is possible for us to live the life again in the world. If it is possible, then what would we be? فَنَتَبَرَّأَ مِنْهُمْ كَمَا تَبَرَّأُنَّ minna. We will renounce our leaders. If we can go back to the world, if it is possible for the clock to be, um, you know, taken back, right? Then we definitely would renounce our leaders as they have renounced us today. Now, why will they say this? كَذَلِكَ يُنِيهِمُ اللَّهُ أَعْمَالَهُمْ حَسَرَاتٍ عَلَيْهِمْ Because today Allah is saying, كَذَلِكَ They are saying this, يُرِيهِمُ اللَّهُ أَعْمَالَهُمْ Allah is showing to them their life, how they wasted their lives following these crooked, evil leaders. حَسَرَاتٍ عَلَيْهِمْ Today they are regretting. حَسَرَات means that they have so much regrets in their heart. Then why did I waste my life chasing them, following them? So I think, Allah today will show them A'malahum, their deeds that they wasted their lives following these crooked and evil leaders. Hasaratin alayhim. Today they have regrets. Wamahum bikharajina min an nar. But Allah said, No, the world is finished. You cannot go back there. It was only one life to live. And you have lived that life. You messed up your life. It was your decision to follow these crooked leaders. Now I think you are being thrown into the hellfire. And وَمَاهُمْ بِخَارِجِينَ مِنَ النَّارِ And you will not be able to come out. Come out of the of the hellfire. So brothers and sisters, this is the, um, the, I'm sorry, my, okay. So, وَمَاهُمْ بِخَارِجِينَ مِنَ النَّارِ And they will not be able to leave the hellfire. So my dear, dear brothers and sisters, I know you and I, everybody, in our youth, in our teenage years, then in our, um, even now, to some extent, uh, you know, we have been following these um, entertainers, literally. And uh, we are really their followers to great extent. Uh, so let's understand this, that if we don't pick the right um, right leaders in our life. We are going to be ruining our lives. You see in Surah Al-Fatiha, we say, اِهْدِنَا الصِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ And they say, سِرَاطَ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ Allah show us the straight path. الصِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ And then we say, سِرَاطَ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ The path of those people whom you have blessed. أَنْعَمْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ Whom you have blessed. And who are the people who are blessed? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in another part of Quran, وَمَنْ يُتِعِ اللَّهِ وَالرَّسُولِ فَأُولَٰئِكَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ مِنَ النَّبِيِّينَ وَالصِّدِّيقِينَ وَالشُّهَدَاءِ وَالصَّالِحِينَ وَحَسَنَ أُولَٰئِكَ رَفِيقًا That those people who follow Allah and the Rasul, so they will be in the company of prophets, of, of, of Siddiqeen, 
Siddiqeen is the category of the highest level of Muslims after prophets. They are Siddiqeen. And then was Shuhada. And you'll find yourself in the company, in the group of the martyrs. Was Salihin. And in the company of righteous people. They, they are your best companions. So we must look for taqwa, piety in our leaders, whom, whomever you would like to imitate. So let's imitate prophets. Let's imitate Anbiya alayhi salatu wa salam, Sahaba radiallahu anhu ajma'in, awliyaullah. God-fearing people, so that our life in this world and Akhra could be, could be beneficial, right? So these two ayat are talking about whom we take as our idols, as our examples to follow. And then, my dear brothers and sisters, the next ayah, one sixty-eight, Allah said, "Ya ayuhan nas, kulu mimma fil ardi halalan tayyiba, wala tatbiu khutwaat al-shaytan, innahu lakum aduwum." Mubin. Allah said, O people. Now remember, Allah is not saying, Ya Yuhal Ladin Amanu. Allah saying, O people. Kulu min ma fil ard. Eat whatever is on this earth. But eat halalan. Only that which is halal. Tayyiba. And everything which is halal is tayyib. Is clean. And I said, وَلَا تَتَّبِعُوا خُطُوَاتِ الشَّيْطَانِ And do not follow the footsteps of shaitan. إِنَّهُ لَكُمْ عَدُبُ مُبِينٌ No doubt, shaitan is your open enemy. Why is he our open enemy? Allah said, إِنَّمَا يَأْمُرُكُمْ بِالسُّوءِ وَالْفَحْشَاءِ Because shaitan is encouraging you. يَأْمُرُكُمْ means he's encouraging you to do to commit evil, su means evil, fahsha, indecent, shameless uh, acts. And to say certain things about God about which you have no, no knowledge. That's what shaitan tries to do. Right? So there are a few things that I would like you to pay attention to in regarding these two ayahs. Ayah number 168 and 169. The first thing is that in this ayah, Allah is addressing the people, not just Muslims. So this tells us few things. One is that this Quran is not the book for Muslims only. Because if this was the book for Muslims only, Allah would not have addressed the people. Allah would have addressed Alladina Amunu only. People who are Muslims only. So Allah is saying, no. Ya ayyuhan nas, O the people. Meaning whether you are the believers or you are non-believers. Allah is saying, you are my slaves. I'm your Rabbul Alameen. So Allah is saying, listen to what I'm saying. If you want to live a good life, Kulu mimma fil ardi halalan tayyiba. You should eat that which is halal. Which, and then everything which is halal is tayyib, is clean, is good. So this means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is wishing good, is wishing well to all the people. Allah think if you do haram, haram is not tayyib, haram is khabis. Halal is tayyib. For example, let's say pork, right? Who in the world will call pork, swine, pig as tayyib? Among Christians, among Jews, it is an acceptable, uh, accepted fact that pig is a filthy, dirty animal. In Torah, Old Testament, and in Bible, New Testament, uh, 
pig has been openly, categorically made haram. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran has said, وَلَحْمَ الْخِنزِيرِ that khinzir is haram and it is filthy, dirty. So who in the world will ever think that pig is tayyib? Every sane, decent human being will consider pig as khabith. Even I have seen in uh, American culture that when people get mad and they want to say something <coughs> harsh, when they want to show their anger at somebody, they call him a pig. Why? Because they know deep in their heart that pig is, is nudges. And pig is uh, a dirty animal. So the point to note, note here is Kulu mimma fil ardi halalan tayyiba. Allah think everything which is halal is tayyib. If you and I, brothers and sisters, can deeply believe in it, then we will do very few sins. If you and I can believe in this fact that everything that Allah had made halal is tayyib is good and everything that, that Allah has made haram is khabis is najis whether it is interest backbiting any form of evil any form of haram meat I mean any form of, any form of haram drinks all of those things that Allah have made haram Allah made it haram because it's bad for, for human beings. We just me, need to understand that. I mean, who in the world will tell you that khamr, liquor, is something good? Gambling is something good? No. People who drink they also accept the fact that what they are doing is gravely wrong. They should not be drinking. Right? People who gamble, they know that gambling is not a good act. This lifestyle is not a good, good lifestyle. People who commit adultery, zina, fornication, most of them accept the fact that they should not be doing this. Because this is, it is khabis act, indecent act, immoral acts. That's why when, whenever Allah and the Rasul command us to do things which are halal, we should instantly accept it because Allah and the Rasul know better than you and I. So the second point is, كُلُّ مِمَّا فِي الْأَرْضِ حَلَالًا طَيِّبًا so first point is Ya Iwan Nas, O the people, so not just Muslims. And then Kulumi Ma fil Adi Halal and Tayba. Kulu means to eat. Mimma fil ard from that which is which is on earth. Meaning everything that which is on earth is 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 halal. There are only few things which are haram. So let's say halalam tayyiba. Eat those things which are halal, and every halal is tayyib. And I said, وَلَا تَتَّبِعُوا خُطُوَاتِ الشَّيْطَانِ And make sure that you are not following on the footsteps of shaitan. Khutuat means um, uh, the footsteps. So, وَلَا تَتَّبِعُوا Do not follow on the footsteps of shaitan. إِنَّهُ لَكُمْ عَدُوٌ مُبِينٌ Because he is an open enemy. He's an open enemy for you. And why is he open enemy? Innama ya'murukum bisu'i wal fahsha. Because he is commanding you, he is calling you to commit su evil, fahsha, indecent acts. And that you say anything about God. 
you can just slander god al-a'udhu billah and shaitan enjoys when he sees when he watches human beings slandering god wa an taqulu ala allah ma la ta'lamu and to say about god that which you do not know so in other words my dear brothers and sisters what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had told us in terms of halal and haram it is for our own good now the next ayah is wa idha qila lahum ittabi'u ma anzala allah qalu bal nattabi'u ma alfayna alayhi abana now this ayah ayah number 70 and 71 was were revealed due to certain incidents one of the incident was that when our rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam would call people towards islam for example once Rasulullah was busy talking to a Yahudi to a Jew and Rasulullah was calling him towards Islam Rasulullah was explaining Islam to him so he said what you are saying makes sense to me you but see I cannot accept it because I cannot uh abandon I cannot leave uh what i have uh, seen my fa- forefathers doing uh, they were more knowledgeable they were people of more understanding and wisdom and so what whatever i saw my forefathers doing i'm going to uh, do that so what you are saying it makes sense to me but sorry i cannot go against my the traditions of our forefathers i found our forefathers doing certain thing <coughs> i'm going to <coughs> continue following our forefathers so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying well this is not this should not be the basis of uh of uh, accepting what is right and rejecting what is wrong but what you should see is that not your forefathers look at what is right because it's just quite possible that your forefathers could be wrong on certain things if you understand if your forefathers are proven wrong for example they were doing shirk they were doing kufr they were involved in different kind of bidats and evil things they were human beings but they made lots of mistakes sometimes grave mistakes big mistakes the some of the fo- people forefathers were mushrik now because they made this mistake you cannot continue making those mistakes on the pretext that your forefathers were uh people of great understanding Allah said no and that awalu kana aba'uhum la yaqiluna shay'an wa la yahtadun is it it possible that your forefathers did not understand things and they made open mistakes so let's say don't look into uh what is right and what is wrong through the lenses of your of your forefathers but yes if your forefathers were right if they were on the straight path yes follow them but if your forefathers were wrong and now haq has come to you the truth has come to you right so you cannot reject truth on this pretext that my forefathers were mushriks so i am going to be mushrik as well my forefathers were kafirs so i am going to be a kafir as well my forefathers were doing all kind of bidats so i am going to do bidat because i found my forefathers doing so so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that that this is completely wrong our rasul sallallahu alaihi had come to you come to you he's teaching you what is right so first see whether rasulullah's teaching is a right or wrong don't base your decisions on what your forefathers have done so look at the meaning of this ayah allah saying wa idha qila when and when it was told to them ittabi'u follow 
مَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهِ What Allah had revealed, meaning follow Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, follow Quran. مَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهِ What Allah had revealed. قَالُوا These uh, kafirs and non-believers say, بَلْ نَتَّبِعُوا No. بَلْ here means no. نَتَّبِعُوا We chose to follow مَا أَلْفَيْنَا عَلَيْهِ آبَاءَنَا We chose to follow that what we have found our forefathers following. Al-Fayna means like Vajadna. That what we have found our forefathers doing, we are going to do the same. Awalaw kana aba'ahum. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is answering this. That well, even if their forefathers had no sense at all. And they lacked guidance. So, awalaw kana aba'uhum la yaqilun. That they had no sense. They were misguided. Still you are going to follow them. I mean, they were misguided. Many of them had, didn't had much sense. So, so they made, they ruined their, their lives. So, are you going to ruin your life because your forefathers had ruined their lives? Allah said that this is a, a very, a very wrong uh, way to judge what is right from wrong. So when our Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam will call people of other faiths, Yahud and Nasara and Mushrikeen, and some of them will follow that, no, this is not the, the tradition of our forefathers. So Allah will say, well, look at your own, uh, own self. Make a decision for your own self. Right, based on what haq has come to you. And then Allah said, وَمَثَلُ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا كَمَثَلِ الَّذِي يَنْعِقُ بِمَا لَا يَسْمَعُ إِلَّا دُعَاءً وَنِدَاءً سُمُّمْ بُكْمٌ عُمْيٌ فَهُمْ لَا يَعْقِلُونَ Allah is saying that if you chose to follow your forefathers, then your example, وَمَثَلُ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا Those people who decided to reject uh, God, reject Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So their uh, uh, parable or their uh, example is like kamathal al-ladhi yan'iqu like uh, like cattle that we, when you call out to them you know they don't understand, they just hear a sound and then they, they follow. So na'iqa yan'iqu means when you call, make a sound, calling the animals, the cattle, they don't have understanding. They just follow the call. Without understanding, they are following the call. They don't understand nothing. They don't hear nothing. All they hear is a, just a call. Then you have the cattle and say, whatever, say, come. Or you make a sound with some instrument. And that's all the animals will understand. I mean, you cannot talk to the animals. You cannot talk sense to animals. They are animals. They, they don't have the kind of brain that humans have. So they're saying, you are acting just like these cattle. That you are not looking into the content what Rasul had brought with. You're not looking into Quran. You're not looking into common sense. You just want to go with the flow. Just like cattle do. That when cattle are, are called, they just go with the flow. One animal go, then the whole herd follows. This Allah is saying that you are acting like the same way. Allah said, no, use your brain. If your forefathers made wrong decisions in their lives and they ended up doing kufr and shirk, they made mistakes. They must be feeling sorry now for ruining their life. They left the world. Allah saying, you should not act like cattle. Use your brain. Allah summum bukmun umyun fahum la yaqilun. Don't be like deaf, dumb and blind. فَهُمْ لَا يَعْقِلُونَ That you don't understand anything. 
So if your forefathers fail to understand things, you should do a better job. You should do that which is right. Now my dear brothers and sisters, this guidance is not just regarding uh, kuffar and mushrikeen. This is across the board. It is for, for Muslims as well. Because in our families, many a times, there are many wrong traditions, many bidats, many evil uh, customs and traditions in our, our families. But we know that those customs and, uh, and uh, rituals are wrong, Islamically wrong. It, they are bidats. They are, they, are, they, are, they are something that we should not be doing. But we still chose to do it. Why? Because we say, well, we found my, our ancestors doing it. This is a culture of our family. I know it is wrong. I know it is bidat or haram or whatever. But see, I cannot go against the, the tradition of our families. It's a very old, old, old uh, uh, tradition. I have to continue it. That is wrong. That is wrong. Because those people, whether they were our forefathers or who, whoever they were, if they did something wrong, Allah said in the Quran, Lakum deenukum waliyadeen. Lakum deenukum waliyadeen. For you is your own deen. Deen means the way you led your life. That is deen. Waliyadeen, and for them, many people who left this world, they lived their life in a certain way. So whatever they did, good or bad, it is with them. But you make choices for yourself. Because everybody will go in the qabr alone. You will not go with your forefathers in your qabr. You will go in your qabr alone. And when those three questions would be asked to you, who is your Rabb? What's your religion? And what do you say about Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Your forefathers will not come to answer these questions. You have to give answers. And your forefathers will not be there to help you. So why... Uh, follow the wrong traditions of your families. Why follow the culture that is, that is, that is wrong? You see? We, that's why we need to learn Islam and, and so that we can differentiate what is real Islam and what is culture. Most of us are cultural Muslims, not real Muslims. We love our culture, Allah, many of us love our culture more than we love the religion. Right? For example, you see that people, it's a custom that in Ramadan you, you come to the masjid. Salatul Salat Tarawi is a culture that oh I have to pray Salatul Tarawi no matter what. Well, Salatul Tarawi is not fard. Are you praying five times Salah all year round? If you are not regular with with uh, fard Salah, then why in the world are you paying so much importance to Salatul Tarawi, which is not fard, which is nafil? I'm not saying that you should not pray. But what I'm saying that put everything at its place. But if we give so much importance to nafil over fard. Fard is obligatory. Nafil is voluntary. But because it's a tradition of going to Salatul Taraweeh, even when I'm not regular with five times salah that we continue doing this and after ramadan is over we are not even praying five times salah on a regular basis but when it comes to tarawi salatul tarawi so much emphasis is put on salatul tarawi so try to understand that we should be regular with first salah and salatul tarawi 
if you are regular with salat al-taraweeh but not fard salah it is completely wrong but you say no it is my tradition my uh, brothers and sisters let's look into religion not just uh, traditions so i'll stop here my dear, dear brothers and sisters at ayah number 171 may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help you and understand inshallah um, i'll see you tomorrow tomorrow is juma may allah make this juma a source of blessing for you and me and may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept what it's you inshallah tomorrow juma subhanallah wa bihamdi subhanak allahumma wa bihamdik nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilaik assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh